Here's a quick insert slash update on the Academy M4A3 with T34 rocket launcher for the M group build. Um, just a real quick, basically construction is done, um, paint and decals is done, paint and decals are done, sorry for the grammar, got the decals on here, need to touch them up a little bit with some uh, with some setting solution, but that won't be a big deal. I'll uh, do that and then give it a quick gloss coat and then I can start the uh, washes and weathering. Um, the tracks are complete. A uh, quick note on the tracks. One thing, I did have to make a modification on the, uh, the drive wheels, the drive sprockets, whatever you want to call them. They were too narrow for the tracks. Um, instead of resting on the actual end connectors uh, and the uh, duck bills, there's like a raised portion in between the end connector and the um, guide horn, guide tooth, whatever you want to call it and it was resting on that instead and it just wouldn't fit down in there. So what I ended up having to do, and what's weird is I checked one of the uh, extra drive sprockets. It's the open type, which is incorrect for this vehicle. Um, I just put them together you know, with my fingers and set it on there and it fit like a champ. So these were just too narrow. So what I had to do, as you can see here, I had to saw the front portion of the uh, drive sprocket off and then I had to shim it up with uh, with a couple of pieces of um, cheap plastic evergreen styrene plastic so now it fits perfectly so I had to do it to both uh, both the drive sprockets so you know no big deal a little bit of uh, old school scratching going on there to make it work but no big deal in the end this one's in the process of being shimmed up right now I just need to trim that off and then uh, glue that on there and what I do is I hold it together right after I put the cement on set this in there to make sure that the teeth are lined up properly so no big deal but the main reason I'm doing this particular video is with the kit completely done the only two kit parts I have left to actually do anything with are the cable ends. Uh, I need to attach the cable to it, to the two ends, get that painted up, and that will take care of all the kit parts that are being used on this particular kit. Now right here I have a list, and right here I have a stack of bags. And each one of these bags is... Uh, extra parts. Now this one, these were large sprues and it is primarily uh, primarily consists of uh, running gear components. Wheels, um, bogey halves, there's a few machine gun mounts, or not mounts, but uh, machine gun storage clips, but everything else is drive sprockets, wheels, and bogey assemblies. And I've labeled each bag, as you can see, uh, with the kit, what the kit is, the sprues and how many. This is actually two sprues worth of parts right here. And this is the only one I really just cut them all off because they were, they were big sprues. So, a quick rundown. Um, the A sprues, which is what's in this bag, all the running gear, there was two of those and they were dated 1999. There was, this is how much was left off of the two sprues. Um, we had a Let me find it. We had a, where is it? Sorry guys. I'm being a doofus here. Ah, the G sprue. Sorry. The G sprue, which is this one right here. 
Um, hopefully there's not too much glare. Yeah, you're, you're good. Uh, this is mainly weapons parts. There's a number of different barrels, uh, some with handles, some without. Um, ammo boxes, frameworks of some kind, uh, machine gun, the actual uh, cradle that the machine gun fits in, uh, machine gun mounts, the machine gun swivel uh, mount there, um, the uh, ammunition, uh, the ammo box holder that mounts on it. I mean, just this is all machine gun stuff. And that one did not have a date on it. So it uh, looks like, oh, and there's also a really nice receiver right there and some uh, ammo, uh, belt ammo, which is actually looks pretty good for something that small. But anyway, there's that sprue. And then we have, uh, let's see, E sprue which is kind of small um, it has it mainly consists of periscopes uh, another machine gun um, like a, a holder clip like would be on the back of the turret to clip uh, clip it in place or barrel in place whatever for extra parts there's an extra uh, cupola and hatch uh, a couple of uh, periscope swivels uh, this one is actually dated 2003 and on the back it says 135th Sherman. Oh, then we have sprue D, which is a 30 caliber, which is more machine gun mounts, clevis hooks, uh, fuel uh, filler caps, um, a machine gun uh, pintle. Sledge, you know, Pioneer tools, more ammo boxes, a wooden box, a couple of uh, rucksacks, um, and then a whole machine gun there, uh, M250 caliber. That one is sprue D. That one just says on the back 135th Sherman series. Doesn't have a date or anything. Then we have sprue H which is this one and this one has like some spare tracks um, antenna mounts more clevis hooks cable ends a few handles a lot of machine gun ammo boxes um, then it has a couple of uh, road wheels um, the two-piece type road wheels are the flat pressed steel type um, some canteens, fuel cans, fuel can holders, fuel can handles, and then a bunch of assorted nuts and bolts, and uh, looks like casting numbers. And this sprue is dated 2001, and on the back of that label it says M10 GMC, so obviously this uh, <laughs> would go with... Um, would go with the uh, M10 tank destroyer and the only piece I used off of this sprue was an antenna mount so go figure a lot of extra parts for that then we have sprue F which is uh, there's the rear shelf storage shelf that goes on the rear of the tank periscope um, guards uh, cupola uh, hatch two front hatches uh, the open type um, sprockets, the solid sprockets, and it's just the one half of the sprocket, it's not the other part. Uh, and then there's some tow hooks, just various little uh, pistol ports in there, more um, periscopes, uh, lifting uh, hooks. Looks like some ventilator caps, just various and sundry parts. Uh, machine gun pintle, springs for the uh, front, the driver and uh, radio operator's hatch. That one is dated 1997, and on the back of the 1997 Sprue F label, it says 135th Super Sherman. Uh, I did use quite a few parts off of that, so that's obviously some crossover stuff. And then finally, we have sprue, another sprue A, 
Uh, this one dated 2006, and on the back of the label on this one it says M4A3 105mm. And there's quite a few parts I used uh, off of that, including um, the travel lock for the 75mm. There's an extra travel lock here with the top uh, pivot part clamp. There's some periscope covers. Uh, looks like an um, infantry uh, radio for the back for communicating with the tank crew. Periscopes. Uh, there's a set of fenders and then you know various other small parts um, the fender braces that go from the fender up to the side of the hull and then some fenders obviously those are uh, those are obviously uh, that's kind of weird because this is labeled M4A3 I guess it could be the M4A3 with the uh, HVSS system in it but that's it so that is kind of a I look at it as kind of a nice bonus in this kit is all these extra parts because I plan on doing a lot of Sherman based vehicles and I've got a lot of extra parts here if I were to get something that had some wonky suspension on it um, I've got a full full tanks worth of uh, suspension with the open type wheels so it's kind of nice so anyway, that's just a little interlude from my usual updates on the construction stuff. Um, next, I'll be next update I'll be posting will be uh, starting with the weathering, painting the tracks, and that kind of thing. So, as always, thanks for watching. Plastic Miles by Regular Dude. Comments, questions below, and I will see you next time.